Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop tech talk number 60. Boo, 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 boo. 60. <sighs> That's amazing. That's amazing. It's, we've been doing it that long, and I mean, really only been doing it for what year three, and a half? Three years. Is it three years? Almost three years. I think we started in we yeah, started before years, the right. pandemic. It was a year yeah, before yeah. that. So yeah. two and a half years. Yeah. And 60 episodes of Tech Talk. Each one of them loaded with more information than your brain can possibly process, which is why it's great that it's on Facebook and on YouTube, so you can watch it over and, and over and over. Again. That's right. That's right. And if you have a question for us, throw it in the chat room in Facebook or on YouTube Live, and we will get that question answered because that's what George and I love to do. We love to answer questions about home voiceover studios because we know more about it than anybody else. And we're usually accurate with our answers. Most of the time. <laughs> trust, um, trust us. We know I, these things. I have an interesting product to talk about the sound screw. And now you're going to figure out what that means and uh, be creative with your answers. Wrong, what's that mean? Wrong answers only? On Instagram, they'll post something and then say I, we only want wrong answers. So let put in the wrong put in the chat in the comments. What are the wrong answers for what the sound screw is? Okay, uh, <laughs> do we have a prize for the best one? <laughs> we'll see. All right, voiceover body shop tech talk coming up right now. From the outer reaches, they came, bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio, and together. From the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hey there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Wood. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. All righty. Sorry, Jeff. I don't have your button right now. Yeah, we're, we're gonna figure that stuff we're gotta, out. We're later, gonna transfer that to my my roadcaster. <laughs> yeah, I'm keeping a tally work. of all the little to dos. But hey, the show must go on, and, and it is. Here and it's are. working, and that's all that matters. That's right. Yeah, you know, we got the lighting down. We got the the microphones down. All right. Yeah. How's the some... lighting look? Does it look good, Sue? Is this is lighting okay? All right. Yeah, now we can do better. Okay. I Sue's a tough we're... critic. There's some. Shadowing. 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 Dan's got shadows. Oh, well, you know, if, if I put the mic like over yeah. here, there's a shadow. You know, the, I'm, I'm like like Mikhail Gorbachev that way. Yeah. <laughs> we want to avoid um, the Mikhail Gorbachev thing. <laughs> anyway, so we're here to talk about home voiceover studios. You know, a, a, a niche in the world of everything that goes on in the world. But Especially it's, of audio. Yes. But it is the center of our universe. Mm -hmm. And... You know, there's there's nothing like a home voiceover studio because it's yours, it's personal. Mm -hmm. This every space is different, every voice is different, and every pillow is different. Every pillow is different. Yeah. I'm still I'm still working out what works best. I don't want to slouch. No, I'm not. You know, we haven't slouched yet. We're doing okay. It's 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 gonna happen. We're both gonna end up going like this. <laughs> well, you know, is my 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 partner Furious is watching, so oh, I'll get occasional oh, 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 a text right. going. You're slouching. 
Can you smile more? I'm working on it, honey. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate you watching. I, I found that when I was in Iceland, <laughs> there, there are pictures of me. I look totally pissed off. Right. It, we call it the RBH or the, well, it's not nice. It's not politically correct to say it, but um, yeah, but the, the RDH, the resting Dan face. Yeah. Because it's, it's all <laughs> hidden behind the mic. So now that we have to take pictures, it's like, you have to really exaggerate really a smile. <laughs> so if you see pictures of me going, that's he's why. just exhausted. I, I was tired. Well, you know, it was seven hours difference. And they made you like do stuff. Right. It was not, this was not a passive cruise. You oh, were. no. You had to get on a bus. Yeah. You, you know, guys were, you know, but ATVing, um, walking. Yeah. Going up elevations and going down elevations. Yeah. And it was, no it was, it was, but it was still a lot of fun. Go see Iceland. I'm going to keep telling people that for a while. Now we can't decide where we want to go next, mm. but there's, just, we got a lot of places on the bucket. New list. Zealand? That was, that's one of the places on the bucket that list. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. You know, in Australia and places like that. But, Back to the matter at hand, which is yes. home voiceover studios. Let's do it. If you really, you know, you, you really have to get your home voiceover studio sounding right. That doesn't mean it has to sound great. It means it has to sound like you. And like you without the, the stuff. distractions. Right. And the, the noises. There's the background noise. There's no reflection. But how do you do that? If you don't know how to do that, you're in luck because George and I know how to do that. Because that's all we do. I mean, I'm a voice actor and I do, I work full time as a voice actor, but it, you need to, you need experts, you need professionals to teach you how to do this and get your studio sounding the way mm -hmm. it's supposed to sound like. So all you have to do is contact one of us. You know, if you're like totally clueless as to how all this works, talk to a professional. So if you would like to work with a professional person like George here, how would one go about doing that? Yeah, no. they would go to George the dot tech, my belly button. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, they go to George the dot tech, um, or George the tech dot com if that makes your little brain short circuit that weird domain thing. Um, and uh, you can head over there, there's a menu of services. And if that is a little bit dizzying in terms of its array of options, just send me a message on the contact page and we'll get back to you with the, what we think would be the most helpful for your needs. And Dan also has a site with a longer name. Yes. It's right here. There it is. It's Boop. homevoiceoverstudio.com. And uh, go over there. You'll see the services I offer. And, uh, you know, we can have a conversation. We do a consult and teach you from soup to nuts. If you have no idea what's going on, if you've got all your stuff and you have no idea how to use it, I can teach you how to do that. But if you've got all your stuff and you've, you know, you've been recording, but you want to know what your studio sounds like, to somebody who knows what it's supposed to sound like, right? I have my specimen collection cup, and you can drop off a, a specimen of your audio uh, raw. I don't want to hear all the technical stuff you're trying to do to it, right. especially if you don't know what what the heck. Don't you're try doing. to hide the room tone. That's right. We'll I want know. To, we're gonna get it sounding <laughs> as clean as possible. Uh, for twenty five dollars, I will do a very thorough audio analysis. Talk to anybody that's done that with me, and they'll say, you know, he's really thorough, and it is worth that money. It is because it'll make it'll you'll change your entire brain as to how to do all this. So. Uh, that's that's our plug of Palooza for this week. Sounds good. All right. So I, now, I, I had yes. a little extra tag on too. Okay. I'm also doing webinars now, self produced. Ah. Dan and I have done a bunch for John Florian, Voiceover Extra. I'm starting to throw some into the hopper myself. And if you want to find those, go over to George the dot tech slash webinars. <laughs> that's where I'm doing the new ones, and then you can get the replays right. for the ones I've already done. Like we did one on audition on an audition primer. And we did a twisted wave uh, sort of primer as well, like beginner one. And there's some enough, some more coming, but we're still working on the systems to make it all work smoothly. I have it's to be a, a guest star on one of yours. Though. You're going to be on the audition advanced. Ah. Because I want to see how you use SpectraView. Oh, well. I'm, and some other stuff. I've been so. using it for over 10 years. You know, That's why. One of my favorite things. That's why I want them on. So what do you Let's have go. in your tech update this week? All right. Well, first, I promised I would mention the sound screw. And this is one of those products that many were sending to me saying, have you seen this thing? What the first it? person that actually sent it to me um, was a guy named Skip Kahaney, who's he is like actually become my guru, a guy that I go to who has the degrees, does the really big budget jobs, you know, uh -huh. doing sound studios, not stu studios, but um, like um, 
venues, mm-hmm. concert venues. Things are really big budgets. Right. And um, he sent it to me. Now, we had a little chat about what the sound screw does and what we th- if we thought it would be useful. But what it is, this is this product, and I'd love to tell you where it came from. It was developed by Hacken Wernersen of the Department of Material Science and Applied Mathematics at Sweden's Malmö University. I think oh. it's Malmö. Malmö. It's M-A-L-M-O with an umlaut. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, here's a quick, a very quick summary of what this thing is. And this is definitely a visual thing. So if you, so if you want to show this, and even looking at the picture, you still may not really understand well, what it does. I see exactly what it is. It's a, it's a screw with a spring. Right. Um, whereas a traditional drywall screw holds a panel of drywall snug, like very right snugly up against the right. studs that make up the structure of a room. The sound screw features a flexible spring just below the head. It still allows a piece of drywall securely uh, to hold a piece of drywall ah, securely against a wall, ah. but with a very slight gap allowing the spring to expand and compress um the damping the and that dampens the energy of sound waves hitting the walls making them much uh quicker uh quieter boy i can't read uh maybe we should make it bigger like you do i should do that <laughs> making it much quieter as they reverberate into another room um during sound testing in a lab researchers say the use of sound screws was found to reduce transmission by up to nine decibels making them uh, making the sounds bouncing wow. into a neighboring room roughly half as loud uh, to human ears. Nine, nine dB is really what you really need, you know, in a marginal. Yeah, that's that's that. Is that a, a single a single solution soundproofing thing? No. no. Um, would it make a big difference? Like if you're trying to improve the, the privacy of your bedroom? Yes, it would help quite a lot. Would you use it inside an ISO booth that you're con- custom constructing? I don't know yet. There's so many different systems and methods of construction that are already proven that we use. So it's hard to say. I, I, if you read the article, by the way, I found a, a good article about this on gizmodo.com. Your so Bible. You, it's, it's a good ga- gadget uh, <laughs> blog if you look for that article in there. Um, they definitely seem like this is something that's for like large projects, like condominiums, apartments, things like that. Um, anyway, we'll see how it goes in some testing in the real world. See if anybody tries it. My my guru Skip said the problem with this type of idea is if any one of those, let's say seventy or ninety or one hundred and forty of these little screws, if any one of them is not fa- let's say it fails, right, or isn't doing its job, it short circuits. It short circuits the whole yeah. thing. <laughs> so there's a big problem there. So we'll see how it goes. But it's it's interesting to see. I, I love seeing uh, innovation in this area. So that's cool. cool. Another topic that's been brewing since uh, we were off the air is the news of audacity now being owned by another company, um, which may sound odd to you because it's free Mm -hmm. and it's open source, but it is, it is owned by another company. Now, along with that came a lot of controversy or controversy. What's the right way to, what's the right, wrong way to pronounce it? If you're in London, it's come. Yeah, it's the other way. (laughs) Um, it's it's controversy yeah controversy um there's there was some controversy because there was this new uh privacy uh thing that you had to sign off on to use it you know so people were starting to think oh my gosh this is becoming spyware um audacity is now going to spy on my computer and how i use it so there is a great article, which I have certainly not. Scroll down that article. Show them how long it is. <laughs> it's, it's crazy long. <coughs> Pardon me. It's on liberarts.com. L-I-B-R-E-A-R-T-S dot org. Not dot com, dot org. Um, check out the article on there about audacity, privacy, and you can really, really dig in. But there's... Um, there's the, the thing to know is that it's not it's the software is going to remain it's not going to change its overall functionality it's not going to all of a sudden cost anything right that's what they say it's going to remain you can totally free. donate to them you can still you can. donate to it um one functional thing that's changing in the next version or in this latest one is what paul licamelli by the way and i could be saying his name totally wrong it could be lissamelli i'm sorry for that paul but 
he's got it. He's on a great Facebook group for audacity. Um, it's audacity for voiceover. Mm -hmm. Um, that's how I know him. But, uh, he mentions that there is something called a unitary file format, which will, uh, uh, which will spare many users the common error of moving the AUP file without the companion folder. So what it is, is like one large package file or a bundle right. where all the other files are, are bundled together. Right. So I think that was in my world, that's not an issue because I don't really use the AUP file. I just would say save a wave. Right. Or an MP3. Right. But if you're doing production, podcasting, multi-track, uh, you want that AUP to keep it. Well, now they can be bundled together into one, one package that so you can that keeps it keeps yeah. it from getting in trouble yeah and 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 sending the wrong file things like that so um definitely check check out the the stuff on youtube about this um there's a great interview uh that was done by of paul and many others on the development team by um a fellow who i will spell his name tanta cruel t-a-n-t-a-c-r-u-l and it's called I'm now in charge of designing audacity seriously. So go find that on YouTube and watch it far longer than we can possibly share here, but you'll get to see Paul actually oh, in, cool. in the flesh explaining what's new with audacity. And really what's cool about that video is, is really the in-depth explanation of how it came to be. Right. It's been around for 20 years. It's pretty mind boggling. And I got to say it's, it really is getting better and better the feature set is really is really impressive and it's very stable and it's free and it's still free um not free not even close <laughs> no, to no, it no, no, and the other not. direction is uh <laughs> is the universal audio apollo which we you know we have a i have a love love hate relationship with it you know there's uh, but I, but anyway universal audio that owns and and creates the apollo has purchased another company that um if you were watching the interview with Mara Juno, or uh, Mara Juno, marijuana, marijuana, Mara Juno. Yeah. If you were watching the, no, it's she has nothing to do with marijuana. It's it's a mnemonic thing. It's anyway. If you were watching that episode, you'll 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 hear her mention a microphone called the uh, Townsend Labs Sphere L22. <laughs> this yes. is a crazy, sophisticated mic slash software solution. Well. It's been working so it it basically does a mind meld with an Apollo interface and it becomes like the ultimate multi microphone simulating product. Like it's one mic that does the job of a hundred mics. If if you happen to need that sort of thing. If you're really uh well okay. If you're you're uh Mara and your boyfriend is Jordan, you need one of these microphones. Um <laughs> if your boyfriend is is like a massive Mikey. But um anyway, long story short, they actually purchased a universal audio purchased the assets of Townsend Labs. So hmm. um what does that mean for Townsend Labs? I can only hope that it means there's gonna be even more rapid development of interesting plugins and models, and hopefully hopefully good support that's mm. the part that makes me nervous whenever like companies swallow up small companies right are they still gonna have the, that kind of personalized that level of support i hope they do are you listening universal audio don't screw this up okay we love this microphone we love your equipment please keep giving us good support anyway that's all the tech news i had to talk about tonight but um thanks for letting me blather on well that's why we're here for crying out loud <laughs> but we have questions uh a few in there already yeah. we want more though give yeah. us more questions yeah. folks so i i figured you know we could talk about just about anything on this show because it's our show mm -hmm. i mean we can and we have been talking about anything mm -hmm. uh but you know i work with a lot of clients and sometimes i'll get a client that that's like i have to use pro tools i've got to use this i've got a mixer I, you know, I bought a studio from somebody and I produce all this stuff. I have no idea how to use it all. <laughs> yeah. They bought, they bought a rocket ship and they need to drive it to the grocery store. E exactly. Got you it. Know. Or, or familiar know. with that scenario. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 and so the question becomes, do you simplify, you know, if they're familiar with using pro tools? Yes. This is a dilemma. Uh, but 
you don't really need it. I mean, I'm, if you're not if you're not technically savvy and you know how to arm a track and hit record and that's it, what do you need the rest of it for? Right. And so I'm I'm trying to figure out how how to how to consult how to with some, Yeah, how do you transition somebody to something far less sophisticated that's going to sound better? I mean, when I first arrived here in LA, and I started, you know, doing the kind of stuff you do and going into people's houses and into their home studios and seeing that literally, despite the fact that I was, you know, in Buffalo all those years doing this mm-hmm. and I was working with people over Zoom and, uh, well, I it was Skype back then. Yeah. But to find that people here were literally 10 years behind technologically. Yeah, they're they were, still using all those outboard gear, all the all you know, analog the, mixers, all this stuff, you know, and you'd go in, you know, and you and I loved going in there, plug out all the plugs and it's like, okay, plug this in, uh, your mic into your interface. We love unplugging cables, man. I oh, go in yeah. there and tear out cables right. like crazy. And, play, and, and okay, record something. Now play it back. Wow, that sounds fabulous. Yeah, because you, you, you had all this stuff and some engineer who's like, well, this is all the stuff I use. You should use it too. Right. And that's not the way you should do things not when you're self-engineering exactly <laughs> you can't do the job of that engineer that right. set it up for you right as well as that engineer did it when they set it up for you right and especially if they didn't know what the heck they were doing <laughs> sometimes that's which, another which problem happens another layer to the onion there yeah <laughs> so you know again we just need to remind you guys it's not the equipment that gets you work it's how you use it and use it to the point where you're not using it mm-hmm. to where it's like hit record, do what you do, which is voiceover. You know, you talk into the mic, you read the copy. Don't worry about what's going on in your computer because it's, yeah, it's a computer. Yeah. It's compilating things and changing things around. I've simplified it down. It's a cassette recorder. <laughs> Play, stop, record, rewind. That's why I like Twisted Wave so much. Which is why I like it too. Now, have you ever tried to get someone? So that's Twist Pro Tools. You can't reprogram the keyboard shortcuts, no. right? Yeah. And I think that's for a reason. They want every engineer that knows Pro Tools to know oh, Pro Tools, right. so they can move from one studio to the next, right? And they didn't have to worry about it changing. The beauty of Twisted Wave is you can reprogram keyboard shortcuts in Twisted Wave to act more like the way they were in pro tools Hmm. and so not many times but i've had a few opportunities to go in there and make for example one two three four five Mm -hmm. or zoom levels in pro tools right Right. you can program those keys to do a similar thing in twisted Twisted wave Wave. right command bracket up and back and forth is another zoom thing Mm -hmm. you can make twisted wave do that so that is one way that you can try to help socially engineer somebody out of using pro tools but it doesn't it doesn't always work but yeah. uh yeah. it's something i've tried yeah the, th- the thing is is that people think that well pro tools sounds better than twisted wave mm-hmm. no it does mm-hmm. they sound exactly mm-hmm. the same they it all depends on what your microphone's it's, going it's into the, yeah, and your the computer. signal chain it's the it's the room noise it's the acoustics it's the ad converter uh that's 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 what matters not not the not what's capturing the stream of ones and zeros right and so you know keep it simple and and you know i i mean i don't use pro tools could i use pro tools if you had to if i I had to but i had a client come and you say okay we're gonna pay you this amount of money right and we need you to use pro tools what are you gonna do um, go get pro tools no i'll record something and then just throw it into pro tools and say here's your pro tools file I mean, <laughs> well that's know, true they don't you can know record the it in anything you want that's and then right. put, make a pro tools project so that's right yeah, and, and that's but, what i would probably do but no one's ever asked me to use pro tools no because they know that my audio is going to sound good no matter what right I use. And you're going to send them a wave right <laughs> and it's, it's like a universal format right. and they can take that and they can shove it into pro tools and they can do whatever the heck they want that's with right. it so I don't understand. I think there's a, there's a certain geekiness. There's a certain, I won't call it arrogance, but there's an air of sophisticated. Well, I use Pro Tools. Well, that's yeah. fine. But if you're just using your voice, you don't need all this stuff. It's, it's you know, what, how do I describe it? It's getting a, you know, a, a control room for a nuclear reactor to control a, a hamster, hamster in a wheel. A hamster yeah. in a wheel. That's really, the one I remember. It's pretty silly. 
only been using that for about 10, 15 years. So <laughs> I may have memorized it by now. Anyway, we got a few questions coming in. If you've got a question, throw it in the chat room. Jeff Holman is probably still in his hotel room in Vancouver watching this and going, oh, I got to get all these questions in here. Put it in the chat room in Facebook or on Ustream Live, depending on where you're watching. And uh, maybe we can get one from Clubhouse if that's working. We don't know. But ask us questions. That's what George and I love. And we'll be right back to answer those right after these messages. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. We've been sequestered for over a year. Forced to watch undubbed Turkish soap operas. And face it, we're all zoomed out. But now it's time to get back on the road again. And if you have to record your voiceover tracks on the road, there's no better way than to use a Harlan Hogan Portabooth Plus. With one zipper assembly in seconds and lined in Orlex studio foam, the Portabooth Plus is your answer to professional recordings on the road. And because summer travel and remote recording are finally back, here's VoiceOver Essentials gift to you. Only for VoiceOver Body Shop viewers, buy a Portabooth Plus and you'll get their fabulous Portabooth Plus travel bag absolutely free. Just go over to voiceoveressentials.com forward slash booth and bag and just click on the Portabooth Plus Carry On Travel Bag Buy Now button below. No promo code needed. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Look what you made me do. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. It's the time of the show where Dan tries to get off camera, which never works because we have a wide camera and we talk about Swords Connect. Created by Source Elements, our wonderful sponsors. Um, this is a tool that connects your studio to others around the world, and it has cemented itself as the tool of choice among the pro productions in the world, um, especially in the last 18 months during the situation. I've seen a lot of YouTubers call it the situation. They don't want to mention the C word or the P word for good reasons. Um, but it's a really remarkable tool, and... Um, it has become just a staple in the production world where it allows voiceovers audio to be sent right into a track in Pro Tools. And it can even automatically back itself up, which is huge. It can, using something called the Cue Manager, continually record what you're doing, the actor, on your end, seamlessly, transparently. And then at the end of the session, it can either replace errors in the audio, like if there was a glitch, or it can then completely replace the entire session with a wave file not the compressed version that was streamed with source connect so it does all that seamlessly and it is really quite remarkable and uh it makes your job as an actor so much easier you don't have to edit anything you don't have to you know mess around with the file formats whatever it, it's just you walk in it's the closest thing to going into a real studio or commercial studio where you have to leave your house and uh, being able to just record. So anyway, if you want to give it a try, head over to sourceelements.com, get a 15 day trial and get up and running. So you can feel more comfortable with it. If you're feeling a little intimidated by the whole thing, their support is excellent. And I've got a bunch of training stuff to help you get started over at George, the dot tech slash S C. So anyway, thanks so much source elements. And now Dan's going to slide in. And we're going to go right so to the questions. <laughs> we'll find a better way to do that. But yeah. anyway, it's been fun. Um, 
All right. So it's audience questions time here. Yeah. So we've got a few in the queue, but if you've got one for us, the best thing to do is throw it in YouTube chat or Facebook chat. And we'll give Clubhouse a go and see if that's working now. We've had some issues today with that one, but we'll we'll see how it goes. But we're, we're working on it. If you're desperate to get your answer questioned and your question answered in Clubhouse, jump into the chat in uh, YouTube or Facebook and we'll, we'll make sure we get it. You've been watching the Olympics? I hate to say that I haven't, even though oh. there's skateboarding, which I think is awesome. There's there's cycling and mountain biking. It's sort of like skateboarding. It. It's teenagers splatting on their tuchas, essentially. A 13 year old got the cold from wow. Japan. I do know that much. Yes. But you know, which kind of makes sense. I mean, who has the time that, to learn those tricks other than kids? kids. Exactly. If you're an adult with enough spare time, well, I know some of you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I digress. Uh, okay. It's pretty it's pretty amazing stuff. But All no, right. I have not been watching it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I I, I can't wait for Reco Groman wrestling. Reco Groman? Reco Groman wrestling. <laughs> Isn't I'm, it Greco Roman wrestling? Yes, it is. <laughs> so you you transpose you're things test, in there immediately. I think of Reco Reco Groman Roco. Reco Groman wrestling. <laughs> it's the drunk way to say it. Anyway, Sorry, Asafra, I swear I'm totally sober. Okay. Uh I saw this question earlier and I, I have some opinions on it. So it's please let's, let's toss in here. It says, uh, oh, did you see a post from Armin who wrote this one? In? Oh, I think it was uh, Gerard, Gerard McGuire. Gerard McGuire. Uh, did you see the post from Armin, Armin Hayastetta, mm -hmm. uh, the head guy over at Bodelgo about the combo Isovox and ISO Mike, perhaps something you may have opinions about. Uh, Hope you were both well. Well, we're fine, Gerald. Uh, Thank you. They're Gerard. Uh, yeah. Uh, I have seen the Isovox. It sounds like a tube. I, 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 I have one. You have I, one? I got one early on. They sent me one as a demo. I did a review. Yeah. And it's, it's yeah, it's got some acoustics problems. You know, if you're a reporter, if you're, you know, if you're, you know, on, a on rock location singer. or a rock singer or something, where it's not really critical. I don't know if it isolates you very well at all. And to a me, it, sound, it sounds like a tube. It's a, it's a, it has a bit of a sound to it, a little a little bit of a boxiness. Isobox 2 has been out for quite a few years, so yeah. I don't know if they're in the lab working on the next edition. They probably are, I would imagine. I hope so. I, if there's an Isobox 3, I'd say it needs to be a little bit larger, possibly. Um, but anyway, I love the... the you gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta give them some props for for making something like this that's been manufactured very very well actually it's a really well produced product but so now they're 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 partnering with a microphone company and so they're mm. tr apparently they a, a have a mic canceling mic well it's called the <laughs> isovox iso mic yeah um and um let's see i'm looking at this and going um, you could adjust the sound by using eq of course and thanks to the frequency range of 7 hertz to 87 kilohertz this is absolutely possible. It's not meant to be used like that, though. Um, this microphone has... Are you kidding me? This microphone has a, ref, a frequency response of 7 hertz to 87 kilohertz? Am I hearing that right? Well, no. You're, you're, if you're hearing it, then there's definitely something right with your hearing there. <laughs> That's <right>? freaking amazing. <laughs> That's... <laughs> I think I know what company makes this mic. It looks familiar to me. Do you remember when we went to Nam and we saw a mic with a triangular yes. capsule? Yes. I believe that is the it's company that, that making company. this microphone. They made a partnership because um, they're both Swedish companies. That yeah, yeah the Erland Erland, Erland microphone. Yes, um, triangular diaphragm. Well, you know what? Like everything else in this world, there's so many amazing, unique, and incredible miracle products out there. Until we hear it used in context of real voiceover, voiceover. work, and yeah. do we have to refix the EQ? That's the question. I, I I'm curious to see how it works. But I suppose if you made a mic who was that was literally designed to work specifically with that booth, you could design the mic to work in that kind of a situation, yeah. and then it could probably work pretty well. Cut off everything under a hundred hertz and <laughs> for sure, <laughs> and then and that'll probably. Probably well, that's probably. that's what uh, we mentioned. Townsend Labs mic. They actually have a plugin right. that will adjust the mic's pre performance to work better in a really small box. Hmm. Like it, it, it tries to figure out. Well, you're in a little whisper room or whatever, so we're going to change the response. So, 
this I wouldn't be surprised if they had a setting for the ISO box. Ah, all these gadgets and gadgets. <laughs> so anyway, if you buy this whole package, you're in it for about two thousand three hundred euros. Um, so does that is that a one stop shop solution? Again, mm. don't know yet. We'll find uh, out. But if I got one of those mics and I already have the ISO box, maybe I could do a test. Let or, me know. Or maybe I could do a test. Yeah, I could ship it to you. I'd be happy to bring it over here. Bring it over. It's taking up a little bit too much space in my garage. Well, okay. Well, if that's the case, then I'll bring it on over. Bring it on over so we can make a mess here with it. <laughs> All righty. Uh, Patricia Andrea, if you had to buy a computer now, preferably a desktop, mm -hmm. but could be a laptop for voiceover. Oh, yeah, of course. What, what would you get? Guys, like this minute, this day, there's the computer that Dan and I use. And it doesn't necessarily mean that I would recommend it to everybody because it's still so new. But Dan and I are both using and finding good success with the Apple M1 and MacBook. I'm sorry, the, the Mac mini. Right. M1. M1. Yeah. Um, because it's just it's it's a, a major leap forward in technology. Think of think of how fast if you have an iPhone or an iPad, think about how quickly it does everything. Amazing. Right. Yeah. It's like almost everything you do is instantaneous. There's yeah. no there's no little pinwheel of death <laughs> while you wait to load something. Sometimes, you know. Oh, yeah. if, you get, if you're running a lot of things, but I okay. don't keep as many tabs open as you do. Does yours have the 16 gigs of memory? Of course. Remember? It does. So does mine. Mine doesn't do that very often. My mine doesn't do the pinwheel. I think I it has gotten any. I think it has more to do with some of the compatibility of some of the software. Are you using any external hard drives? Like a spinning disk type hard drive plugged um, into it for anything? I usually turn it off. Okay. That's the only thing I've ever seen that does it. I yeah, I, I would external drives. Yeah. But we <laughs> we're having our own little sidebar here. Yeah. But anyway, this is what happens when you talk computers. Yeah. But the M1 is the M1 Mac Mini is a hell of a deal. Yeah. Uh for the performance that you're gonna get. And it's are, super are we, quiet. Are we at a phase here? I think we're getting a little bit of phasing cancellation. Maybe if I move it over here a little bit, that'll happen. Yeah, a little more, a little phase cancellation is happening. We, have, I could also like do this and, and move and point my mic away, but now it's now it's. Yeah, <laughs> let's just put it back where it was. This is this is professional audio engineers. Professional broadcast. There's also I could go up and underneath, was, so it's pointing up my why, nostril. Why, why did I sound quieter? Because we we're out of phase. Yeah, actually, how's that work? Do we like that? That, that sounds. How's that look on that camera? Sounds, that sounds. I'm not usually a big fan of up and under because it's like pointing in my nostrils. Yeah. No. But it sounds much better. Let's now. try that for a while. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, <laughs> so, so we like the M1. The the uh, in in the Windows side of things, um, I don't have a go to, but if you do a little research, you can find some silent PCs um, that are not that expensive. Um, you know, very small, very compact, and. You're not for voiceover specific work. You're not looking for a powerhouse computer. No, you don't need it. You're looking for an efficient and quiet one. Very quiet. So, check out some of those like um, fanless home theater computers, or not a gamer PC. Say those; those are typically high power computers. Right. Lots of horsepower, really fast GPUs. Don't need that at all. That's the stuff that makes it run hot and kill the battery and make noise. What what about like a like a Surface or one of those small Microsoft? Uh, I have seen the 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 Surface to be a really great uh, solution. Actually, you mm -hmm. know, it's it's a real Intel i five CPU computer. It just mm -hmm. looks like an iPad. So, I've had good good success with that. I haven't used it that many times. I think I've put it in two studios, but yeah. it works fine. Again, not power. That's not what you want. You want silence. You want simplicity. Um, that's simple. what's, yeah, that's what you really want when you're looking for shopping for a computer. Interesting question from Bob Leadham here. Good. Should I answer it or you should, should I read you it? Should. You, you can read it and you can answer it. I can it. answer it too? Okay. <laughs> um, Bob says, what is meant when someone says that a microphone takes EQ well? as opposed to badly <laughs> i don't quite get that I, it sounds like an engineering term that somebody's trying to be totally trying to be you know my theory on this is is that it's a mic that's relatively um has a relatively flat response or yeah. smooth response and this is something you wouldn't know unless you looked at the frequency response chart provided by the company that makes the mic. 
right assuming it's accurate so if you're looking at one that has like a pretty it has a little bit of a rise here maybe at the top it goes up a little bit and then it rolls off that's not so bad but if it's a mic that has lots of little sort of erratic bumps up and down mm -hmm. that's going to be harder to eq well because those peaks when you add some eq those are going to jump up and get maybe sound bad hmm. that's my theory on this i uh, i have to eq every mic well not every mic i have to eq any mic <laughs> i don't really get to choose and so i rarely find a mic i can't eq mm -hmm. so to me it's kind of it's a little bit confusing but that's my guess is theoretically that would be why yeah i mean and the with eq usually the only stuff that i'll do with eq is you know maybe take off the low end if there's like a rumble or something mm -hmm. and, you know Oops. and yeah, okay. That's the problem with it being right here. It's you're gonna you you're go. gonna keep it. I'll just keep <laughs> knocking it myself. Um, I find that you know if you have a good mic, trust the sound of what it has, and you know if your room is right, trust that. An engineer gets a hold of it. Let him do whatever he's going to do to it. You know, if you're trying they to do set, prefer that you be yeah. really light or no, no. EQ. If you're trying to satisfy your own ears, you got to remember that you don't hire you. Oh, this was a good topic that you mentioned this because I'm yeah. getting to echo this, echo this more and more. Yeah. Someone came to me and they are a producer. Uh -huh. So they've been on the other side of the glass right. and they know it sounds good. But he's now crossing into voiceover. He says like, he, he, he's not making a living as a producer. It's kind of a by mistake <laughs> thing, but he was, he was, what, what happens sometimes, how, how a producer ends up doing voiceover. Somebody doesn't show up. Well, yeah. that, well, there's nothing called <laughs> scratching. Yeah. They're that's like scratch a temp track. voice right? right scratch track but he yeah. was doing a good job people are like hey you know the scratch voice on this is pretty good let's just yeah. hire that guy long story short he's doing more and more of it but he came and said i want you to make some processing for me when i was done with it he was like wait a minute you did everything i didn't you you did all of, you added or you left there all the things that i don't like about my voice and it was like okay let's look let's unpack this a little bit and long story short i was like are you working with a coach he right. said no mm -hmm. i said it's time to work with a coach send some audio to the so you know i ended up referring to rick uh, wasserman book mm -hmm. bookable mm -hmm. and he's now working with him which is i love it when someone takes my advice i, I hope it right. works out well <laughs> they, they pay you to do that uh, yeah so but you know well better uh, but anyway long story i it was, I, instead of saying, you know what, I, no problem. I'll, I'll redo that for you. I was like, no, let's, let's take a look at why you think it, you sound the way you sound and does what you think about is, is it that what matters? Mm -hmm. Is it, is what you think the way you sound, what really matters versus what the clients are hiring people to do right. or what sound they want to hear? Exactly. You know, that was the, that was a little headspace I had to get around in, in him because he's not a newbie right. to the world of this work right he's just a newbie to being the one on mic right and being heard right you know? and wants to sound a certain way except that everybody hears differently and that's and you hear yourself you know, very, very differently. differently very good point yeah it's interesting stuff yeah uh okay, shauna well, shauna rose turner go for it uh shauna says i have a booth in a bedroom but the rest of the house echoes terribly well uh, i have a kennel of dogs and <laughs> I have to, oh she has to kennel the dogs so put oh. them away she has to pack up the dogs um and uh, the children choke about the kids uh good one um i've considered sound buffering artwork huh. um, but i don't know if it would be a waste of money that could be better spent on my next idea which is I'm leaning more towards getting a storage building and finishing it out like a proper booth thoughts. She shed a, she shed Dan, one of these days you got to do a tour of Mar Marcy. She <laughs> Go shed. for a walk with your phone. Now yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll do that sometime, but yeah. Dan's Dan's wife's got one right outside the building here. Yeah. She had, she had space envy because I've got this wonderful, you know, man cave here that we do the show and in. the kids are home and the kids are home. <laughs> and, a lot more lately yeah well jacob's been at the uh, he's been out more at but, the office but yeah. lewis is still has has his office here yeah. and she doesn't like sharing the space there you go and so we got we contacted tough shed oh actual tough shed actual tough -F shed. shed you know we designed it online they came it was built in six hours we put drywall in it cool and now she has her yoga studio, craft studio, she shed out there. How is it keeping it cool? How do you cool, cool it? Uh, we have a portable air conditioner. In there. Mm -hmm. 
you know, one of those, you know, big portable air conditioners, yep. you know, now it's in the sun, it gets hot, mm-hmm. you know, which makes her want to move back to Buffalo, which I keep saying is not happening. At That's least what not I was going to ask Sean. I was like, where are you? Okay. So <laughs> what, what's the climate like? Um, what kind of noise levels are you dealing with in your neighborhood? Mm-hmm. And what's your budget? Because really at the end of the day, it all comes down to what um, can you afford? Because that's going to be a big determination. No but question. In my estimation, any project of this nature um, that's done soundproofed properly and cooled so that you can run the machine while you're, yeah, that's you're going to cost be, you a few. Bucks. You're going to be in the. You're, I mean, I hate to tell you, but prepare for minimum thirty to forty thousand. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Like if you were to hire someone to do hundred percent of the work, right. turnkey, the budget gets into that ballpark quick. So you know quiet on demand comes with a big price tag that's right <laughs> it totally does yeah and, you, and, and, and trying to texas camp- oh yeah. boy sean is in texas oh yeah not oh. good yeah but if you have an outbuilding already if you have one okay i still think the building is probably maybe a third of the budget on that yeah well the thing i i have found that if you've got a, a an outbuilding that is away from the house and away from the street if you just put in some you know, acoustical blankets in there, as long as you're not quiet, right next to an airport, or something. right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, that's always a problem in Southern California because yeah. everyone has an airport. Uh, but you know, it it as long as the acoustics are right and you're in a quiet spot, mm-hmm. it it they're very very useful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, we can talk about it. I mean, Sean, I've, I'm consulting on a lot of people's projects like this, so let me know. Hit me up, as the kids say, at George the oh. Tech. <laughs> And we'll oh. <laughs> we'll unpack it. We'll we'll get into the nitty gritty and find out what uh, what you might really expect yeah. to do to yeah. solve that problem. Yeah, Mike DeBord asks, "Hey George, do you have a recorded version of your Adobe Audition webinar?" Why, of course. What do you think? I'm crazy to not do that? No, I do. If you go to that same, if you go to George the dot tech slash webinars, I also post the link to the recorded version, which is on Vimeo Pro. So thanks for asking, Mike. Yeah, I'm brought to you by. Uh, J. Horace Black. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Great to see everyone healthy and well. Hey, you know, uh, had a lot of actors ask me of late, is there much difference in internal components between the Focusrite 2i2 and the Solo? The difference is, is yeah, it's got one mic input. Yeah, I don't, I, 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 we, I can't answer that with authority. I haven't done a tear down, (laughs) looked at it chip for chip. But um, not likely at all that there's going to be any difference in sound quality, functionality. Yes, as Dan said, one has one mic, one has two mic inputs. So um, if it doesn't have the same pre in it because you know. And, and you think that, of it this way: these are very affordable home studio pieces of gear. Right. For them to make a different set of components just to have a slightly upgraded model would make no sense, right? Like right. logically, they're going to use as much of the same stuff as possible in the next version. So, okay. I've, I still can't say guaranteed they're identical, but there's no reason to believe they would be anything other than identical. What ones and zeros are ones and zeros. As far yeah, as it's going to use the same preamp, the same AD converter, right. same headphone amp. If it's from the, if it's from the same generation, keep that in mind too. Yeah, they're, the third generation. They're on gen really three nice. yeah. and the gen three is really nice. Yeah. It, I mean, it, the headphone amps better, everything, it's really good. Yeah, I, I've I've noticed that. You know, I, I've I've listened to a lot of you know interfaces, USB interfaces. You know, I mean, Check we did our, that shootout. Type into Google go, go USB go interface shootout, shootout and watch our our video. Yeah, uh, because as far as we were concerned, do they sound different? Yeah, a little bit. Do they sound better than the other? It doesn't matter. Listen to the listen when we do a supercut of Dan reading a piece of script. It's nine different interfaces intercut. And let us know how much of a difference it makes. Right. Yeah. But it, yeah, don't get uh, too caught up in that. Okay. You get the next Pamela. One. Pamela. It could be Pamela or, or Pamela, Pamela or the or name Pamela. Pamela split into two, two names, which would be really interesting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused by the fact that you don't suggest using things like an ISO box and various other boxes around the mic as they give a poor box sound, but you do promote a portable box. In between segments, uh, would the one you promote actually be acceptable to use at home or as well? 
Or are you saying that it's better than a typical hotel, but still not ideal? Why I would we... say leaning in that direction a little bit. Yeah. Well, it was designed specifically for travel. Yeah. I mean, that's what it was. It's I mean, a problem solver for solving that it, problem. Right. Could you use it at home? Yeah. yeah, you could. Do I know people that do? Yeah. Does it sound as good as like a good walk-in it, closet? The fact of the matter no. is, is th there's a there's a difference between what say the porta booth is and what some other ones are. And, yeah, you know, and there's there's a technique. A lot of it's use. technique. I, I was going to say, and there's a technique <laughs> the to key. it. You don't talk into the center of it. You talk either across the bottom lip or you talk across the top. And lip. you don't put the mic all the way in, in the, the back. back. Yeah, it goes near the front. So the, it, there are a lot of techniques to it. But honestly, Harlan's Porta Booth Plus is my of all the products he's he's made in that lane lineup is the one I like the most. I yeah. think it's the great great with the four sixteen because that's what it was designed. I for. I think so. That was really the primary mic he yeah. was using, and then his own microphone, the VO one, the VO one A, absolutely, which is that mic right here. Which by is, the way, that's what Dan's talking into. Have you ever wondered what a VO one A sounds like? It sounds like that. It sounds like that. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. Sounds from pretty a, good from a fist away. It sounds like that. It's pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see here. Uh, yeah. So, you know, can you use it at home? Yeah, still better to have a place you can isolate yourself. None of these boxes will isolate you totally from no, the exterior. Not even noise. ones that are literally yeah. called the words ISO, anything, uh, can, can stop the sound of your neighbors, your own dog, right. your own kids running around the house. Trust me, it's all going to be in the recording, all of it. All righty. Porsche Q asks, Q, you're cute. Uh, wow, this advice is very valuable. Well, that's why we do it. Thank you. Uh, I have a Rode NT1, but mm -hmm. feel an upgrade would improve my sound. When, why do you feel that way? Highly unlikely. Yeah. Advise that if I'm not getting an above $3,000 or so mic, then save the bucks and leave it up to those who hire us to perfect the sound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. Yeah. You know, the fact of the matter is, is we, and we've discussed this over the years for every, say, Five hundred dollars you go up in price on a microphone, the actual sound improvement, whatever that means, that is perceptible, is probably less than one percent. And I'll argue okay. that there's a certain point where it goes down. Well, because it's going to hear because what everything, well, the, the, yeah, it's more sensitive. Um, and a lot of those really high end boutique mics are designed to have a character to them. Like they're not designed to be super clean and super clear and accurate. They're more designed to have a certain voice to them. So they're not even going to be as accurate as an NT1. I mean, the VO1A, the Rode NT1, very, very similar in sound quality. I've, we've, I've compared them. They're extremely similar. Right. They're, they're really all anybody actually really needs, given that you have a good recording environment. Like that's, that's it. Like it's already doing the job well. And extremely well, mm -hmm. right? They're low noise, very no distortion, sound clear and natural. That's that's what you care about. That's what you need. Um, everything else is bells and whistles or tubes or other gadgets to modify the sound of the mic and not have it be as accurate. That's what I would argue. So Ab absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Don't bother. Yeah. <laughs> work on the room, work on the room acoustics, work on your mic technique work on all that stuff and more even more important let us hear your audio to yes. see what you actually could be what would actually be worth spending money on right in your studio if at all good point thanks uh pamela asks another question or pamela whatever her name is or his name is but perhaps we don't ask these things anymore they, whatever their name is. Whatever their name is. Um, yeah. What, what stats would you suggest for purchasing a Mac Mini? I'm planning on a one terabyte SSD, but I'm less certain about the memory requirements. Get the 16 gig. 16 gig. Yeah. Um, yeah, yes, you can that. get away with the 8 gig. Yes, it will work pretty well. I have a MacBook Air with 8 gig, and it does work fine for most things. But all the geeky reviews I've watched and things like that, there are some tangible, noticeable differences in performance. And it's not a big expense. Like the one terabyte of upgrade is a lot more expensive right. than going from eight to 16. Right. So if you're on a budget, go smaller storage and go 16 gig uh, memory. Okay. All right. Last thing was a big, a quick compliment from compliment. Dave G. And he says, I'll say it again. Getting an effect stack from George is 
so worth it. Now, Dave, I want to know why. Good question. That's what I want to know. What what exactly do you do when you when you throw these stacks together? These are not like humongous you well, know, switches. In, it is in, sometimes because well, some people it, send me some pretty bad audio. Okay, well, it, and I will give them some notes, but right. sometimes I'm like, I okay, I understand you're get trying to get away with something. You got dogs. You got you're next to the airport. Tons of noise reduction. <laughs> You know, well, there's an air conditioning humming in the background. Okay, we'll take out 120 hertz. You know, like put a a notch EQ at 120. Try to get that humming out of there. Yeah, that's what some of it is. So some of it's restorative yeah. or repairing right. the audio, um, and some of it's sweetening it a little bit. So I mean, if they're using a mic that's really flat and dull sounding, and they're doing commercial work, and I know that something that's a lot a little bit more sizzly and bright is going to be right then i'll maybe add some top end certainly just, always just a little bit usually just a little bit yeah because most mics don't need any more top end exactly. that's what they don't need um sometimes it's just a little their, their booths and often are oftentimes boomy right so i'm trying to remove that and then i use like a two to one compressor mm -hmm. um, a lot because a lot of voice actors don't have the training the the training to have their levels of their voice be consistent throughout the entire read. You know, right. I'll get the file and they start loud and then they get softer towards the end and then they get loud again and they get stuff. So yeah. a two to one compressor smooths that out. You know, it's a help. So it's it's stuff like that. Um, yeah. If someone's like, I got to do tele television affiliate, I'm like, okay, that that needs to sound tonight at eleven. Da, 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 da. It's like super loud in your face, grab your attention in these right. next ten seconds. That's a very specific thing, right? right. So um, bottom line is it's really critical to know when it's the right time to process. And it's more, I think nowadays, it's less and less appropriate to do it. Good. Glad to hear that. It truly is. It truly is. So yeah. know when it's, you got to know when to hold them. Yeah. To, when to, fold to them. me, everything is physical. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, Dave, if, you, if you're on here still, tell us what it, what it has done for you sp tangibly. Right. Is it booking you more auditions or what is it doing? I'm just right. curious. All righty. Lots of great questions. Thank you, guys. Oh, it's so much more fun just hanging out with you as opposed <laughs> to just like it staring is. at you through a screen. Like and your that. new air conditioner rocks, by the way. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's nice in here. <laughs> it's comfy. It's like in a professional TV studio this where is, yeah, people are wearing is, parkas. And this stuff. is really coming. This is coming around. Yeah. All righty. Uh, well, we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back to say goodbye. So don't go away. We still have some important stuff to tell you. So We'll be right back. Ooh, I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did. I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beetle body shop. Hi, here I am in my normal workspace with a question. What's the biggest challenge you have with voiceover? What's been the puzzle you need to solve? The question you need answered. Well, David H. Lawrence the 17th and the coaching team at VRHeroes.com want to know. They're creating new courses and training, and they want to know what you need most. And it's easy to let them know. Just drop an email to david at VOHeroes.com. That's david at V-O-H-E-R-O-E-S.com. And let him know what you'd like to know. Is it tech-oriented? Is it auditioning? Is it about booking more work? Finding an agent, podcasting, audiobooks, performance questions, whatever it is that keeps you up at night, that makes you scratch your head, or what you've always wanted to know about success in VO. Email David and ask. The email address again is david at voheroes.com. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, VoiceActorWebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. 
Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. And we're back to say goodbye. But it's fun answering your questions. Where else are you going to get this information? You know, the, mm -hmm. the, and not get geeked out. You know, it's you know, there's so many people out there. Oh, I'm an expert on this, and you know, it's like I, I work hard to 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 adjust the throttle on my geek governor. <laughs> I I want to geek yeah. out so hard yeah. sometimes. But, yes, you know. Yeah, and now and now take, that you're sitting next to me, I can give you a zest. Give me a little. <laughs> he, he can kick my foot off <laughs> out of frame. You know, All right, roll well, it back. I know we got some great guests coming up. Uh, I know we have. Uh, Amy Chapman in a couple of weeks. Who's, oh yeah, uh, you know, a, a, a vocal therapist. Do you think she'll be in the studio? Because we need, Gosh, we need our it. first in studio. I, guest. I know. Uh, I see and, how it goes. And and then there's uh, some other people that we've been talking to. So we've got some great guests coming up. So don't go anywhere. Yeah, I mean, you can watch any episode that we've done. But you probably, you know, if you were really like, you know, hard up during July when, when we were gone, you probably watched every episode. Just go into the internet search engine of choice. Or even YouTube, yeah. And type VOBS yeah, and something, yeah. you know, you'll find a tremendous amount of resources. Yeah. Or on our website, the guy, you know, uh, VOBS.tv, all the episodes are there as well. Mm -hmm. And on Facebook, where you'll find all of them. Mm -hmm. Anyway, who are our donors of the week? Why don't we do them in? Yeah, uh, let's tag team. Them. One, okay, go for it. Uh, Is that what you mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, we'll alternate. Robert alternate. Leadham. Stephen Chandler. Yes, Icon Productions. That's Martha Kahn. Yay. Don Griffith. George Whitham Sr. Brian Page. Rob Ryder. Patty Gibbons. Diana Birdsall. Greg Thomas. Ant Land Productions. Hi, Uncle Roy. Looking forward to the going to the Oh. Maybe, maybe going to the picnic. I'm we'll still see. in the maybe. I hate uh, to say it, but okay. I, I'd love to go. Yeah. Uh, Shauna Paynes and Baird. Uh, Michael Kearns. Christy Burns. Graham Spicer. Hey, Graham. Hey. Uh, Michelle Blanker. Christopher Epperson. Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Trey Speaks for You. Trey Mosley. Yay. Tom Pinto. And Shelly Avellino. Wow. A lot of them because we, you know, this is like a month's worth of. Yeah, we've been accumulating. People, so. Yeah. So. We appreciate it. Your donations help. It makes it so we can, like, you know, pay Sue. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's More important. Money. We want her sticking her money. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. All righty. Hey, if you need help with your home voiceover studio, you can go to a bunch of places like you can go to George the dot tech. That's my home on the site. And you can go to homevoiceoverstudio.com. Yep. And you'll find me there. I just hang out there staring at my website all the time. Uh, need to thank our sponsors, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And, and JMC Demos. Demos. Did he pay what? double for that? He did. So we could read it like that? I know. Okay. Uh, Jeff Holman for sticking it out up there in Vancouver. Thanks, and Jeff. Getting it done. Danny Burnside on Clubhouse. Uh, Sue Merlino for getting it done by just being there and pressing all the right buttons and making us look like we actually know what we're doing. Being tolerant, being patient, <laughs> and putting up with us, and Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, look, voiceovers, you know, there's a lot to it. Mm -hmm. If you can get your home studio right, that's that's most of it. But you want to get that out of your head so you don't have to be always to have that subconsciously bothering record. you. Yeah. Because in the long run, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard, by the and way. I'm George Whittem, by and this, the way. And this is VoiceOver. <laughs> Body Shop. Or VO. BS. BS Tech, Tech Talk. Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. We'll see you next time. Bye. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.